So I think up next is the fisheries group. Okay, good afternoon. Um, our topic uh, was fisheries science, and actually, um, I think really what more captures this is fisheries science management and operations, because we had good representation from across all uh, components. We had excellent uh, discussions to really capture um, the, the pluses, uh, minuses, and the um, some interesting, and spent a lot of time really kind of consolidating and really focusing on what uh, the most significant outcomes were. So we did come up with five for each one of the areas. Um, the first area under the pluses was the ability to manage, understand spatial distribution of species and habitats. That was uh, one of the most significant opportunities and benefits for, for uh, uh, of course, all three of the different sectors I mentioned. Um, a second was a, a, as a communication tool for organizations, be able to provide information on regulations, uh, information to the public on species, on, on into the consumer, and, um, Third area was to look at the integration of, uh, and, and the importance of integration of physical and baseline uh, ecological data with fisheries information. Um, some areas are more evolved in that process, but uh, a very significant opportunity and ultimately a, a, a long-term plus of, of uh, the use of uh, GIS. Um, the next was uh, the ability to use real-time location-based use of GIS. And that was uh, raised as a, a very significant uh, effort by fishermen, both commercial and recreational fishermen, um, some of the most significant users of, of uh, um, a lot of that information on the fly, basically. And the last area was the ability to have visualization, or more, I, I would, I guess, clarify that as, a, a, I guess, more rapid access to the ability to do visualization and analytical tools for large data sets. So that captured our, the, the scope of our, our broadest uh, uh, view of what the positive, the plus sides of the fisheries uh, component was. On the minus sides, and again, we did kind of the same thing. A lot of the ones uh, kind of counterparted with uh, or, or um, compared to some of the positives. Data structure, limitations um, that were with large data sets and the problem with maybe very large backscatter uh, information, the ability to process and, and have the capability. Uh, to do that. Uh, the next was the ease to, uh, it's easy to misuse uh, a visualization. And it, if you have very limited data that actually went into it, the possibility that it could be uh, uh, misinterpreted or, or used uh, incorrectly was uh, one of the minuses we, we had uh, identified. Um, and of course, I think a number have already mentioned this, the gaps in true 3D and 4D and, and, uh, analysis capability, something that is, is a, a, a significant uh, desire by uh, most everybody involved. Um, the next one was dealing with data access issues. Um, and one of the most uh, significant discussed was the, the inability right now to really uh, support open data at this time. Um, in addition, the uh, uh, difficulty with integrating outside statistics tools like R. So those were our, our um, minuses that we identified for the fisheries side. And we then consolidated pretty much what we had left under the interesting side of this. Uh, MOP concerns with fishery dependent data, we have issues uh, with regard to uh, confidentiality issues that sometimes limit the ability of use of that information in different platforms and different uh, conditions and models, et cetera. The confidence levels and data quality issues, those are things that need to be addressed over time. Um, the still inability when uh, you have a, a very large, extremely large data sets uh, uh, not able to be analyzed this time or being able to be transferred into any kind of spatial uh, presentation. Uh, interpolation as an issue. And the last area was looking at really trying to get the, uh, the opportunity to get quicker visualizations, access to be able to present this in, in, in quicker formats. So that captured the, uh, the group, as I mentioned, we had a, a, an excellent cross-section of individuals and really um, covered um, the the topic very well. And one of the good things too is we had a regionally uh, um, um, covered area. So we had fisheries from Alaska to the Pacific to the Southeast, and uh, um, through you know it really did cover a very cross section. So it was an uh, excellent discussion and kind of crystallized some of the significant issues. And I would open it up to any of the other members of the group that if they had uh, additional 
components of each one of these areas. Um, now is your opportunity to highlight those or if there's questions. Thank you. Well. I'm um, curious about the real-time location-based use of GIS. Can you please give some example of what, what the application or what you're tracking or what real-time data you're looking for? Well, in that, um, one of the specific examples I raised is how large of a community is using, say, for example, sea surface uh, data. Fishermen, recreational, in our region, the recreational component in the southeast region is massive. It's a billion-dollar fisheries. There are a lot of people that are using oceanographic information to guide where they're fishing, um, time to go out, uh, locations of species. And in other regions, commercial fisheries are using real-time information to guide maybe where, where they're uh, uh, providing vessels or, or vessels to go based on catch histories associated with them, maybe oceanographic characteristic at that point, tuna fleets, et cetera. Traditionally, in the Gulf of Mexico, they use the data sets to provide guidance on where, where those eddies and where those, those hard uh, temperature break lines would be for more efficient fishing eff efforts. So those are just a couple of the examples. I think it's a broader scope than that, but that was a couple that were raised in the discussions. Any other questions? If not, thank you. <laughs>